Prescription products require completion of an online medication consultation with an independent healthcare provider through the LifeMD platform and are only available if prescribed. Subscription required. Individual results may vary. Additional restrictions apply at LifeMD.com. Read all warnings before using GLP-1s. Side effects may include a risk of thyroid C-cell tumors. Do not use GLP-1s if you or your family have a history of thyroid cancer. If you've struggled for years to lose weight and have given up hope, did you know you can now access GLP-1 prescription medications through LifeMD? LifeMD is now offering eligible patients online access to GLP-1s, the breakthrough prescription medication that can help you lose body fat and weight. Listen to what people are saying. I've been able to live my normal lifestyle and I've lost 20 pounds already. It changed my life. I wasn't expecting it to shut off the food noise. This was life altering and if I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it. And here's the best part. Your insurance may cover 100% of the cost of your medication. So go to TryLifeMD.com to have your eligibility checked right now. Get started today at TryLifeMD.com. That's T-R-Y-L-I-F-E-M-D.com. Forward gets out of a tackle, now turns on the Jets, up to the 30, the 20, 10, 5, Torrey Hart, back to the end zone. 20 yard play, guess who, Body up the middle, making another move, to the outside, 15, 10, end zone again. Nice move by Brown, he's got space, he's got six. 35-yard touchdown for Byron Brown, a record-setting night for the South Florida quarterback. Third so far, a little bit of a high snap. Jenty right up the middle. Jenty has room. Ashton Jenty, give him six. Lagarde tries to beat it. G5 all the time. Welcome to the G5 Hive Live, and we are excited to bring you the G5 college football coverage you love each and every week. I am Luke, and I am proudly joined by my co-host, Justice. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a follow, a like, and a retweet. And if you're listening to us in podcast form, please leave a rate and review. And don't forget... The G5 Hive merchandise stores is now live. You can get that down here at the link below. If you're watching us on YouTube or X, uh, that'll also be in our YouTube video comments as well as pinned on our X page at the bottom of the screen here. All right. Well, uh, let's get into the next of the good stuff. This week's topics, um, week 11, week in review. Um, let's see here. My screen is frozen. Give me one second. All right. Midweek games, G5 matchups, Bowling Green at Central Michigan. We had Bowling Green on top, 23-13. to 13. Connor Baslack, 207 yards passing, one touchdown. Uh, my, and then we had uh, Harold Fannin was not able to get um, – the 100 yards receiving, unfortunately. So, kind of a bummer there. Um, but this was, Michigan, this was our third our, string QB. Yep. Um, this was our Tuesday. What, what, what did you deem it? Um, tight end Tuesday. Tight end Tuesday. Because you got uh, Harold Fannin Jr. and Tanner Cozy, all two of the best tight ends um, in the G5. Um, they, they played okay, but they didn't play up to their quote standards yeah we were talking about i think my question was hey does was does harold fan score over 100 yard or get a, over 100 yards um this week You're like, most definitely i mean the weather was kind of crappy if i'm if i remember it was it was, it was it was raining yeah but, uh, it was pretty rainy um then uh, Miami of Ohio at Ball State. Miami of Ohio pulls out the 27-21 to 21 win. Samoza, 280 yards passing, one touchdown. Uh, Bowick had eight receptions for 171 yards and one touchdown. Justice, did you get to watch? I did. I did. That was, that, was, that was the better game. Um, and I think, I think we mentioned it last week that you know, I think the spread was over seven and a half. I think we both felt that Ball State could – 
could uh, could keep that game close, and they did. Um, you know, they 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 had a they had you know had a chance to win the game. Um, that was definitely the, the, the better game. Um, you know, just uh, they just you know they 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 had a couple mistakes um, that kind of cost them. But and uh, Miami uh, really kind of you know kept Braden Sloan, um, the all-purpose running back there for Ball State in check. Um, he didn't he didn't do hardly anything on the ground. Sixteen yards um, on the ground, and only you know only had one catch. Um, so it definitely seemed like he was a he was a focal point of the um, of the uh, Red Hawks defense. Um, but really, the story of the game, I guess, was the turnovers. You know, uh, Caden Samanza with uh, two interceptions, and that's kind of the difference in the game. Uh, but yeah, it was a good game. Definitely the better of the two. And like you said, the weather in both those games it was raining. It was raining pretty hard. Um, and uh, I'm surprised there weren't uh, more fumbles and there was no fumbles in the, in the Miami game. Um, and then in the, the Bowling Green Central Michigan game, there were a few, but I'm surprised uh, there weren't more. There was uh, th- three fumbles by Central Michigan. Uh, Tyler Jeff- Jefferson fumbled twice. Marion Lukes fumbled once. Um, and the Lukes one's kind of funny because the announcers, the announcers just made a comment about, hey, we haven't had any fumbles yet in this game, which is a shocker given the conditions. And then Marion Lukes uh, – proceeded to fumble the ball. So, uh, (laughs) I believe in jinx. Um, I'm a baseball player, played college baseball. I believe in jinx. I believe in superstitions. Um, so that one's on the announcements. Um, let's see here. That was Tuesday. Let's go over to Wednesday. We had Ohio at Kent state. Um, Ohio wins. 41-0. 41-0. to zero. Parker Navarro, we didn't know if he was going to play coming into the game. He ends up going only 142 yards. Uh, Tyus comes back, has 84 carries and a touchdown. Um, Owen had four receptions, 61 yards. There was a 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in this one. I mean, it was all Ohio from the beginning. Um, honestly, I guess for the score, they could have just stopped after the first quarter. They win 10-0 to instead of 41-0. to zero. Yeah, I mean, um, Kent State's on their, what, to really tackle here. on their fourth-string quarterback. Um, and so, you know, the, the, unless they can get some people back and healthy, uh, it doesn't look good uh, – for them to, uh, to to actually get a win this year. Um, like you mentioned, they play Miami, Ohio, um, and they play Akron and Buffalo. Um, maybe the Akron game, maybe is their best shot. Um, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, if, sure. if they're on their fourth-string quarterback, I don't know that uh, they really have a shot to uh, to win a game this year. It's going to be tough. And then a game that we were kind of talking about last week, that, that caps off our Wednesday night is Northern Illinois at Western Michigan. You know, I think I, I, I think I picked Western Michigan to pull it out, but you know, Northern Illinois, pretty good team. They end up winning this game 42 to 28. Don't score anything in the first quarter and then proceed to put up 21 points in both the second and third quarter. Um, we got Telly Johnson breakout 23 carries 141 yards, two touchdowns. My office, or the rookie of the, or the, not the rookie, but the freshman of the week, um, Rudolph uh, shows up big in this one. Um, six receptions for 74 yards. Again, we just talked about the MAC a little bit ago. This drops Western Michigan to four and one in the MAC. Northern Illinois is surprised two and three, um, with a couple games to go. Yeah, you know, Hayden Wolf had the had two interceptions in the game. Um, that certainly didn't help the cause. Uh, the Western Michigan defense um, did uh, didn't play very well at all, especially in the second and the third quarter. Um, obviously, the first quarter, you know, they, they shut them out. Um, the fourth quarter, you know, I don't really count that because the game's already over at that point. But uh, but yeah, that, that Western Michigan defense was definitely a, a little bit disappointing this past week. All right, and then. Thursday, we had two games here to highlight. Um, App State at Coastal. Coastal is able to pull this one out 
38-24. Honestly, kind of looked like Coastal was going to run away with it. There was a red zone interception by Aguilar there at the beginning. Or no, maybe it was a fumble. I'm trying to remember. There was a lot of turnovers in this game. Um, I think it was an interception. Yeah, Agu- Joey had two interceptions, and he lost a fumble too. So I think he might have lost the fumble first, and then he had he had one interception that – I mean, it was behind the wide receiver, but the wide receiver, like, touched it, which then went to the defender. Um, but, like, Joey could actually run the ball quite a bit. He opened the game with a, a big run, but they had no answer for Coastal Carolina on the ground. Uh, Bennett did really well. Um, he had three touchdowns. All right. I think he had three touchdowns. Yes, yeah, he had three game. touchdowns. Um, but Joey Aguilar, 222, 20, 226 yards passing, one touchdown. Marshall with uh, 28 carries for 124 yards and two touchdowns. He's been getting a lot of run here the last three. I think this is the third straight week where he's had quite a bit of uh, rushes. And then, like we talked about, Caden Robinson goes out, I assume, with a torn ACL, but he had five receptions for. Uh, 76 yard and got his second touchdown of the year. Yeah, um, and he, and that's really when he that's when he injured it. Um, so I caught the very end of this game um, that night. But he 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 like he got the ball like on the one or two yard line, and then you could tell like he like he he picked that leg up and kind of hopped into the end zone, um, fell down the end zone, and then he immediately was grabbing that knee. Um, yeah, and then they had to uh, they had to limp him off the field. I mean they had. It, it, I'll give him help off the field, and he kind of limped off. Um, I didn't at that point. I didn't think it was going to be that serious because, like, he was able to limp off. But uh, yeah, I definitely uh, would look what appeared to be uh, some type of knee injury for him. Um, and then the nightcap for this one: Florida Atlantic at East Carolina. East Carolina dominates this one, forty-nine to fourteen. Kane Hauser has six touchdowns on the day. Um, he had five passing, 343 yards through the air. Um, I don't know if you caught this one, but I'm trying to remember his first name. Um, he was wearing a black hoodie under his pads. Smith, uh, first name for ECU. Or Smith was his last name for ECU, but like he had one of those Anthony bonehead, Smith. Why Anthony receiver? Smith. He had one of those bonehead. Like Hauser could have had seven total touchdowns on the day. He had a long play. Um, I can't remember if it was the third quarter or in the second quarter. And he dro- like he goes to dive for the end zone. Didn't need to. I don't know if he's looking at the scoreboard and looks like somebody's there or whatnot. But he, like, dives for the end zone. I mean, it was kind of rainy and whatnot in the game. But, like, he he could have just ran normal and got into the end zone. But he dove and he came up, sh- like, they called it a touchdown, reviewed it. He was short. Um, so it was uh, – yeah, that ended up being a uh, Harris – Raja Harris touchdown. Um, but, yeah, that was – could have been a bigger day. And East Carolina, since making the switch there to Hauser, has been – And then cruising. the coach. Yep, has been cruising. They've been putting up points. I don't know if they're just free and easy or what it is, but they're launching it. And Justice, I believe you're probably pretty happy since this is like your closet team that you're a big fan of. That, um, <laughs> like they're they're fun. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm, I don't. I don't mind ECU. Um, they're 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 the next. Uh, they're the next closest team to me, other than Old Dominion. So um, they're about two hours away. Um, yeah, and. and you know, it, ODU plays them frequently, so it's you know it's always good when both teams are good and they play each other. A um, little bit of a rivalry. All right, and then to wrap up our midweek games, Friday night we had two games. Let's first start with Rice and Memphis. Memphis pulls this one out, twenty-seven to twenty. Um, EJ Warner, we'll get to him a little bit later in our twenty twenty guys, but he has a pretty good game. 246 yards passing, two touchdowns. Mario Anderson um, continues his 
trek through the the G5 as being one of the top running backs in the G5. 25 carries, 144 yards, and a touchdown. Um, and then Sykes, the wide receiver there for Rice, has been quietly doing uh, – having a really good year. He has six receptions for 76 yards and a touchdown in this one. Quiet at the beginning and then kind of put it on more than that second half there for – for Rice, I did not get to watch much of this game. I didn't know if you got to watch a lot of it. I, I caught, uh, I caught the very end. Um, okay. Uh, you know, and uh, Rice had Rice had a, had a chance to win. They just couldn't. Um, they couldn't get it done. Couldn't couldn't get us get a stop there at the end. Uh, Memphis uh, got a first down to kind of to kind of salt it away, if you will. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Rice kept it as close as they did. Memphis has kind of been a been a bit of a disappointment this year. Uh, we had high hopes for them, them and App State both. Those are probably the the two biggest for me disappointments on the season so far. And then the last game, I got to watch a good part of this. I think I missed like the first four drives total. But New Mexico at San Diego State. New Mexico pulls out the twenty one to sixteen win. Danny O'Neill for. SDSU has 195 yards passing, one touchdown. Eli Sanders, 16 carries, 173 yards, and two touchdowns. Great back-to-back weeks there for Sanders. And then uh, Napier, nine receptions, 63 yards for San Diego State. Honestly, like I said, at the beginning, we are talking about uh, defensive player of the week. I... Marquez Cooper, you knew he was going to get the ball a lot. He got the ball a lot. He just didn't have these big runs. And I I think they kept him under like seven, eight yards for most of the game. He might have had one run there in like the towards the beginning of the fourth quarter that he was able to pop for close to 10. But they were able to hold him, which was good. Honestly, this New Mexico defensive line has been kind of getting manhandled uh, lately. Um, And it was nice to see them step up this week. Um, I just want to know what's going on with San Diego State's field. Uh, The last two weeks, I've been able to to watch their games. And it looks like like they're playing in like almost like kitty litter. It's just like dirt. Like most of the time, you it's like dirt with sprinkle of grass. Um, <laughs> it's like playing between first and second base on a baseball field. Like the it just almost seems like the old Raiders stadium. I mean, not like actual sand like that, but it's just like it's just so sandy. And then there's like pockets of grass. We're like, oh, that that is there's grass there. Um, it just doesn't seem like it'd be something super fun to play in, run in. Uh, I didn't play football, so I don't know if you need the the tall the the long spikes or the short spikes, whatever works best. But I can't, I can't imagine just running in sand. So the um the, the one thing that, I mean to me for New Mexico that that you know they still have a chance to become bowl eligible, which I think is like amazing. Um, yeah, I think folks' expectations for New Mexico uh, weren't very high this year. Um, in my opinion, they they far exceeded what the expectations are, what my expectations Absolutely. were. And um, the fact that, you know, with two games that will go, they still have an opportunity to be bowl eligible. Bowl eligible. It's pretty amazing. Chances of them becoming bowl eligible aren't great. Uh, they got to beat Washington State this week, um, which is a pretty tall order, I think. Um, but, you know, if they if they do it, then they got Hawaii in the last week to become bowl eligible. That'd be a, that'd be a pretty remarkable season. Uh, and Bronco Mendenhall's first year, if they're able to do that. I was running until I wasn't. My hospital stay would have cost nearly $48,000, even with insurance. But with VA, I'll pay zero. And VA is the best, most affordable healthcare in America for veterans like me. Knowing that my family is waiting at home and a surprise medical bill isn't, that's good for my heart. My service was then, my benefits are now. Get what you earned. Visit choose.va.gov. Not all veterans are eligible for the type or amount of benefits mentioned here. All right. Now let's get into our Saturday featured uh, G5 versus G5 matchups. 
first we've got Texas State at Louisiana Monroe. Um, Texas State pulls this one out 38 to 17. I mean, let's just talk about this one. Brad Jackson. True yeah, freshman. When McLeod comes out. I guess he wasn't healthy and they put Brad Jackson. Is that kind of what happened? And then he just ran the ball. I mean, I I did not get to watch um pretty much I didn't get to watch anything before like 5 p.m. So I didn't get I didn't get to see this one. But yeah, Jackson 17 carries, 126 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. It looked like just looking at the like the play by play, like McLeod was in there and then Jackson came in and then McLeod. It was kind of like this hodgepodge of uh, utilization. So that'll be interesting to see how how that goes for the rest um, of the of the year. Um, or you know, does Texas State just say, "Hey, we're three and two. We're not going to win the Sun Belt." I just I don't know. I find it hard to believe that they would do that. Um, but I think the m- more stunning. Um, thing here is just that Brad Jackson was the next guy up. In yes, that, yeah. In that it was, it was, and then it yeah. wasn't uh, R.J. Martinez or it wasn't P.J. Hatter. It was Brad Jackson, true freshman Brad Jackson. And, um, yeah, and, and it sounds like shocking. Jackson. Yeah, it sounds like Martinez and Jackson were splitting reps uh, during the week. So I mean, that was it was that was interesting. It makes me wonder what happened um, to P.J. Hatter, like. It, is he tell, is already told the coaches he wants to enter the portal or I don't know like just a weird situation because yeah, he, he was a pretty uh, pretty uh, highly rated recruit for Texas State and um, it looks like he's now not only was he passed by Martinez who came in late came in and in, in fall camp now he's also being passed by by a true freshman so yeah interesting development there for Texas State. Um, and, and, you know, if, if they go with Jackson the rest of the way, looks like it'd be kind of run heavy. Um, they ran the ball with him, and then Deion Hankins ran the ball a lot too, uh, which surprises me because ULM's defense has had been pretty good up until these last few weeks. Um, but we saw him get torched, was it last week, I think, as well. Um, so, you know, ULV after that, I think the hot start, they were 5-0 and now that they've lost three in a row. Um, so they'll need to do some uh, some regrouping here in the last few weeks for UL Monroe, uh, and that you know you have to get another win to uh, to get uh, get to bowl eligibility. Um, and then we have Liberty at Middle Tennessee. Liberty wins thirty seven to seventeen. Uh, Nick Thaddeo looked pretty good in this one. Twenty two of thirty three for two hundred sixty three yards, two touchdowns. Quentin Cooley. 24 carries, 136 yards on the ground. Like we mentioned earlier, Holden Willis came comes back. I mean, this one has five receptions for 81 yards. The story in this one was Liberty scores 20 in the second quarter. They win by 20. And Middle Tennessee just been just so many penalties in this game. And there was some calls about um, some fans curious about some play calling this and that, but it's just been a whole bunch of penalties. And um, it just sounds like Middle Tennessee just needs to get more reps here. Um, Obviously, it hasn't been the season that they wanted, 3-7 and overall, 2-4 and in CUSA. But I do believe, you know, with the new coaching staff, you just need one more win to exceed how many wins they had last year. Is that correct, Justice, or sound about right? So Middle yeah. Tennessee, they've got a very, very winnable game this week. I'm trying to remember who it is, followed by FIU their last week. Um, yeah, they had uh, – Middle Tennessee had four wins a year ago. Okay, so they need to get to one more to be – there, but they've got FAU as their last game. I cannot remember who they have this week. They have, uh, they have, uh, they, they're on a bye this week, and then they have New Mexico State and Florida International right. is their New last Mexico two. State. So, so depending on what FIU team they get, they could win both games. Um, I think it helps having New Mexico State at home. Um, I expect New Mexico State to run the ball quite a bit, but uh, yeah. Let's see here Army, North Texas. 
this one I was very excited to watch. I thought that it was going to be um, a little bit more points than we had. I also wasn't sure who was going to be at quarterback. There was, there was a lot of questions here. And then when you hear Bryson Daly's going to play, I'm like, okay, here come the fireworks. It's just what we thought. 14-3 to 3, um, was the score, of the, <laughs> the score of this game. Daly had 36 carries for 153 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Chandler Morris had two interceptions. I believe both of them were in the red zone, if I'm remembering correctly. So that Army defense played big in this one. I don't even think that they attempted a pass in this game. So um, this was all running the ball with the Daly again. Coming back from that surgery, he thought he would maybe be run the ball, maybe not that effective, but hey, he he carried the ball a lot and he single handedly helped this army team move that ball down the field. I believe I saw one stat in the game that they had the ball for like I'm trying to remember. It was like nineteen or seventeen plays for 90 some yards and ate up like 13 minutes. Like something, something like dumb. And they're kicking a field goal. Like, just yeah. like, or they were kicking their extra point. Um, it was just something, something crazy that's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's totally army. Um, anyways, getting on to our, our next game, we had San Jose State at Oregon State. San Jose State wins 24 to 13. You get 395 yards passing, one touchdown. Anthony Hagerson for, for Oregon State has 30 carries for 121 yards and a touchdown. And then our boy Nick Nash, six receptions, 161 yards and a touchdown. Dude is on fire. He's pretty much the Ashton Genty of the receiving world. We will talk to, about him in our 2020 lineup, but. This uh, this passing attack keeps launching the ball down the field, keep having six success. San Jose's six and three on the year, two and three in MAC play. Um, I don't. It surprised me. I, I, did, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think. I expected it to be a better game, and I didn't. Like I didn't expect San Jose State to beat Oregon State. To be honest with you, I did not. Um, either. Um, and you would think that to beat Oregon State, you'd probably do better on the ground than you would passing the ball. But uh, obviously, San Jose State, they're pretty good at throwing the ball. Um, and honestly, you get game is, is kind of surprising based off of, you know, some of the other other games this season. Um, other games, Arkansas State at Louisiana. Louisiana wins this one big time, 55 to 19. Moved to 5 and 0 in the Sun Belt, 8 and 1 overall. Woldridge has 264 yards passing, one touchdown. Washington 123 yards, two touchdowns, and Corey Rucker for Arkansas State leads the way with six receptions for 73 yards. Um Anything you want to talk about in this one in particular? Uh, one thing real quick, a technical issue. Um, I just got a message from StreamYard. It looks like something's going on with the YouTube feed. Um, and they're not. It's not streaming right now for some reason. And uh, so if you're watching on YouTube and you can hear me, uh, go to Twitter if you want to watch. continue to watch the live feed. It looks like um, there's some kind of issue with StreamYard and YouTube. Um and then we'll, we'll get the whole we'll get the full video posted later, um, but it you know it looks like they're having issues right now. Something going on with uh, with YouTube. Um, yeah, I, again shocked by the score. Um, Louisiana just you know continues to go out and win, and, and they do it in dominant fashion. Um, that defense is is playing lights out. Um, they they look like clearly the best team in the Sun Belt right now. Um, I think in this one, I'm trying to remember, but I think uh, backup quarterback, am I blanking on his name? Transfer quarterback who went in there. To Arkansas State? Arkansas State. Yeah. Uh, Tim McClain? I think he got in there. 
Jimmy McLean, I think he got in there as well in this game, if I am not mistaken. Only a couple passes. Yeah, he did. He was but, two for two uh, for 25 yards. So, Arkansas State, I mean, it kind of seems like, okay, maybe Timmy comes in there at some point. When does he come in there? But Arkansas State seems to be holding steady with, uh, hey, it's it's uh, Rainer's job here. Um Another game, Nevada at Boise State. This one um, was a lot, like you said, a lot closer than we kind of anticipated. This one is Boise State 28, Nevada 21. It's on the blue turf. I think they would, uh, I don't know, blow them out, I guess. But Nevada's been playing pretty well. Their record doesn't show it. 3-8, and 0-5 in the Mountain West, but they've been playing pretty good football and better than I thought they would. Boise State moved Offensively, to 8-1, defensively, I'm surprised that Boise State didn't score more, but Maddox Madsen did, did not did not have a very good game after having a lights-out game the week before. Yeah, and uh, oh, my uh, computer froze up here. Brendan Lewis 188 yards passing, one touchdown. Um, he also had a touchdown on the ground for 32 yards. Ashton Genty, 34 carries, 209 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Uh, Jaden Smith adds a touchdown, uh, leads the way again, four receptions for 57 yards for Nevada. And then Boise State uh, tight end, Matt Lauder. Five receptions, 61 yards, and a touchdown leading the way there for Boise State. <sighs> Man, I just – I hope I hope Boise just doesn't trip up here in the next couple weeks. It, it just seems like they've had the last two, three weeks some, some close games that uh, um, just closer than comfort. I guess for me, I'm like I, I hope nothing gets ruined. I want to see I want to see them in the 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 playoffs um, and whatnot. But anyways, anything you want to add there? No, um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, they got they got Ash and Genty back on track. Um, uh, but I, it, it almost feels like you know the those the last couple of weeks the two weeks previous he he kind of lost a lot of momentum in the Heisman race. Uh, we, you talk about close. UNLV goes to Hawaii, wins 29-27. to 27. Um, Brent Shager, 282 yards, passing three touchdowns. He's been doing a lot of damage on the ground this year, uh, more than previous years. Haj Malik Williams, talk about doing quarterbacks doing damage on the ground. He had 19 carries, 122 yards, and a touchdown. And then Ricky White. Had a quiet first half, turns it on there towards uh, in the second half. Seven receptions, 128 yards, and a touchdown. UNLV stays in that Mountain West uh, race at three and one, waiting for a Colorado State loss, is what they kind of need to, to jump in there. Um, and so Utah State at Washington. This one, um, I did not watch much of. I just watched, I don't know, maybe a couple minutes just to kind of see how it was going um, in the second half at that at that point. It was 21-7, to 7, I think it was. Um, but, yeah, Utah State loses this one 49-28. They are 2-7 and seven on the season. Spencer Petras has been throwing the ball a lot. He had 45 pass attempts in this one, but only 208 yards and two touchdowns. Um, and then we talked about Faison getting hurt early on. Um, Turner, the true freshman, I believe, or is it a redshirt Richard freshman? I'm not, been, I don't know off the top of my head. He's been getting, like, when he gets his opportunities, he's been doing well. So I'm excited to see him in the coming years. But uh, Faison goes out, hope, should be back um, this next week. But uh, yeah. That uh, that is our um, week eleven. It's now in a rearview mirror. We're 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 done. The one thing I want to say: uh, in the Mountain West, um, 
Colorado State did, doesn't play Boise, doesn't play UNLV in the regular season. Um, and so, I mean, I just kind of, they avoid probably the two best teams. Um, and as a result, they might find themselves in the championship. Uh, they, they don't have a... Uh, one reason a, one reason why I picked them to be in the uh, Mountain West Championship game against Boise State. They have Wyoming, Fresno State, and Utah State left. Um so, so it's just interesting that whole that whole invite the Pac-12 and let them or the the Pac-2 and let them co- be a quasi part of our conference, but not really, is it, kind of is 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 what did this right because you, you get rid of those two teams and they probably play, um, you uh, Boise State and, and UNLV or at least one of them for sure. Um, so yeah, very very interesting uh, turn of events, I guess for. For the Mountain West. That's going to do it for us. Come back and join us next week as we discuss what happened in week 12, as well as look forward to week 13. We give you our waiver wire guys to look for to help you out in week 13 of the 2024 season. As always, we bring you the up to date on the latest news and happenings in the world of G5 college football. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you're watching us on X, please give us a retweet, a like, and a follow. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please subscribe and leave those five-star ratings and reviews. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hot. Lowe's knows you want to get even more value for the holiday. That's why as a My Lowe's Rewards member, you get new member deals on holiday decor, tools, and more. And you earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards to help you save on holiday and more. Not a member? Join for free today at Lowe's.com slash My Lowe's Rewards. Because Lowe's knows deals. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance specialist for University Housing, he knows college students can major in wear and tear. Plus, housing so many students doesn't leave a lot of room to house all the supplies he needs. That's where Granger comes in. With over a million industrial grade products and fast, dependable delivery, Granger carries the quality products he needs so he doesn't have to. From a new door hinge to a whole new faucet. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.